Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Well, today I want to talk about something that I deal with on an almost daily basis. And again, I've already addressed it in a couple other videos, how to balance monitors and color correction, so on and so forth. Watch those videos as well. But in this one, I want to address three of what I think is the top problems people have when balancing pictures so they look good when they get them printed. Now, very first thing before I get into the video, if you're not using a good professional lab, find one. Don't use your discount labs. Don't use your drugstore labs. Don't use these uh, five prints for a dollar or 10 cents a print places because you're getting garbage. They're not balanced systems. Even if they tell you they're balanced, they're not. They change from day to day, week to week. And many of these systems are actually designed to enhance the pictures. Even if you select do not correct colors, because they know that people like punchier colors. So get yourself a good lab. But once you have a good lab, what should you do or what are the three problems that you could be faced with? Well, number one, and this is a big one, and this one gets me in a lot of trouble, so yeah, may as well throw it out there. If you have a computer, any type of computer, I don't care the make, the model, I don't care if it's the top of the line or entry level, I don't care what it is. The monitor is not color corrected. It may come from the factory saying that it's balanced to this or that, but monitors change over time. Monitors change with room conditions. Monitors change with many different things. So you need to get a good balancing system, something to calibrate your monitor so that it is correct and it stays correct. Now, if you're just starting out in photography, don't panic. Don't panic that you're going to have to go and spend $400 or $600 or $800 on a balancing system. There's a way that you can get around it. It's not the best, but it will work. And that is once you find your good lab, once you find somebody that you trust, once you find somebody that puts out a product that is suitable to what you're looking for, send them some digital files, get the prints back, open up those same digital files in your editing program and hold up the prints to them and see how they are. Now, again, this is not ideal, but this is a good way of just trying it out and getting through until you can afford a monitor calibration system. Once you hold the prints up, you will see how those prints look compared to your monitor. Are they brighter? Or are they darker? Are they green, red? Are they yellow? Are they blue? Are they what? What is it with them that's wrong between your monitor and the prints? Now, if you want to, if you feel comfortable, you can actually adjust your monitor colors so that they look closer to the prints. But I still recommend getting your system calibrated. I don't care if you went out and bought that special color calibrated monitor that everybody at your camera club said that you should have. It's not calibrated. You need to calibrate it. Have I said it enough? Let me say it one more time. Calibrate it. As monitors age, whether it be during the day as they warm up, or whether it be weekly or monthly or yearly, monitors change and they need to be calibrated on a regular basis. So you need to keep on top of that. But again, like I say, if you can't afford it, then just get some prints made, compare them and do that as you go along. Tell your lab, don't do any color corrections. Every time you get an order, compare it to see if it's the same. Again, not ideal, but it will get you through. One other little tidbit that I'll toss out there. When you're doing any color correction, density correction, anything on an image, make sure you're doing it on an adjustment layer. Why? Because if you screw it up, you can go back and just remove that layer or fix that layer. So that's the first thing. The second thing. This one gets people really angry with me because they say it doesn't make any difference. And that is the environment in which you're editing. I have so many people that will go out and buy an expensive monitor. One gentleman bought a $3,000 monitor. He went out and bought an $800 calibration system. He set it all up. He did everything that he was supposed to do, and his pictures looked horrible. He was so upset with his lab. He came to me screaming at me, telling me to print the stuff. He said it didn't match. Well, I found out that he had his computer system set up in his sunroom. So guess what? As it got brighter over the day, the room changed. And as it got darker at night, the room changed. So if he was editing in the morning, he would make things look darker. As he, if he was editing at night, he would make things look brighter. And so on and so forth. And he did all these screwy things to his images. 
It's not the computer. It's the environment. So you have to watch as things change in the environment if you don't have it all controlled. Now, in here, I have no windows in the building. I have set lights that are on the same all the time. I have photographers who edit at 2 o'clock in the morning, and they don't have any lights on in the editing room. They send me a whole bunch of stuff in, and it's too dark. Why? Because it was pitch black in there. And then they'll edit the next morning, and they brighten everything up because the sun's on their monitor. So you have to watch what time of day, if the light's coming in, and what colors they are, what colors your walls are. Even if you want to be really picky, what color clothes you have on. If you have bright fluorescent green clothes and you have light shining on it, it's going to change the light that's reflecting on your monitor. Now, that's going overboard, but it will still have an effect. So watch the environment in which you're editing. Keep it as similar as possible. Don't have windows open. Don't have drapes. Don't have bright colored walls that are green or blue or purple. Ideal room is a room with no outside windows, a room that is gray, the room that, that has set lights that are all the same so that they're not changing. You balance your monitor and you are good. Then every time you go in there, you make sure the lights are on the same as they were before and away you go from there. And one of the final thing I'm going to talk about in this video, I could go on and on and on, but it would make this video way too long. And that is no matter how well you calibrate your monitor, I don't care what computer you use. I don't care what monitor you use. I don't care what calibration system you use. When you get it printed, it will never match exactly. Now people are going, oh, what do you mean? I heard that you can get 100% match. You can't. Why? Because when you're looking on a computer screen, the light is coming from behind. When you're looking at a print, the light is coming down. So how do people adjust for this? Well, they used to, and I think some places still do, make these little viewing areas. And you put your print in there, and the lights are really bright, and they shine on the print, and people go, oh, wow, it looks just like it did on the monitor. That's great. The problem is, is that you're not going to display that print in that light condition. You're probably going to take the print home and hang it on a wall in a room that's darker. It's not going to look the same. I always tell people, no matter how well your monitor is balanced, always aim on a little bit on the lighter side when you're doing the prints. Why? Because if you're hanging them in your house or you're selling them to a client and they're hanging them in their house, if you do it as dark as you normally would on the screen, when you get the print, even though it's going to be close, it's going to look a little bit darker because the light's hitting the print and coming back and it's not coming to the print. So there's always a problem with that. Now, I have dealt with this so many times. I actually was hired by one company. They had a 75% return policy on their prints. Their customers were not happy. I went in and the reason they weren't happy was because the lab had all these bright lights in it. When the people picked up, they had these bright lights over the counter that shone on the prints. And people looked at them and went, wow, they look amazing. People took them home and they went, wow, these are really dark. Why are they so dark? Because you don't have the same brightness at home or when you sell them to a client that you do when they're getting printed and the people have all these light sources. So understand that. A uh, little side thing here. I went to a mall in Calgary a number of years ago. And they had a store in there and I walked past and I stopped and I backed up and I had to go in. This store had some amazing artwork. It was just unbelievable. I walked in there and I'm looking at this art and I just went, wow, this is just amazing. Then I walked out of the store and I saw a print that was outside in the mall. I looked at the print. I looked back in the store. I looked at the print and I went, this print out here does not look as good as those prints. So I wandered in, and here's what they had done. First of all, there was a cement floor. It was basic walls and an open ceiling with no tiles or nothing. They had spray painted the entire store, floor, walls, and ceiling black. Then for each picture, and these were large pictures, they would have three or four spotlights on them. These pictures glowed. They were amazing. They looked just, wow, they were so vibrant. Well, guess what? 
many people aren't going to have that same lighting when they take them home. They're going to see them there and they're going to go, wow, these are amazing. I love these. They're going to take them home. And they're going to go, whoa, why does it look so dark? Now, in an ideal world, people would all have areas to hang their pictures that are properly lit, but people don't. So be careful. If you're balancing stuff, if you've got a good calibration system, if you're sending it to a good lab, I recommend that you print a little bit later, even a little bit more on the contrasty side than what your monitor shows you because people are probably not going to display them correctly. So until next time, have a great day. Get out there and get some great pictures. Find yourself a good lab and have them all printed. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.